right. Well, I know if Vish is out there, he's smiling because he always wanted to rewrite Nova and Go. So somebody did it, I guess. Um, all right. So we're going to hear in a couple of minutes from a public cloud provider. But first, I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the world when it comes to public cloud. I think everybody knows at this point that if you're building a private cloud on-premises, you know, OpenStack's the, the clear choice. But not everybody is really aware of all the things going on in the public cloud world when it comes to OpenStack. And if we think about the market as a whole, it's pretty big. It's growing, growing quite, quite rapidly. And you know, one recent estimate is that just the APAC region alone, there will be a $24 billion market by 2020. So it's out of the $3 trillion IT business a year, public cloud is still relatively small. But we're still talking about tens of billions of dollars heading to hundreds of billions. So it's a big deal. And you know, any time a market grows, there's opportunity for different options to emerge. And this is absolutely what we're seeing when it comes to OpenStack. You know, a lot of uh, companies are having success offering OpenStack public clouds based on a few trends. You know, some of them, they have established relationships. They're a trusted provider or partner with a certain industry, a certain vertical or um, there may be data sovereignty issues. There, there are many different needs throughout the market, and more and more choices are inevitable consequence, I think, of, of market growth. So you know, we have uh, many different ones. I can't list them all, but just a few to highlight are you know, DreamHost, Deutsche Telekom, Huawei, Internap, NTT Data, NEC. I mean, all over the world we see huge growth. And I think to put a, a little bit of a you know, number on it, we're actually seeing growth from all over the world, 37 different cities, 19 different countries, um, all the way from New Zealand to Canada and everywhere in between. There's a massive amount of growth. And you know, to give you a couple of examples that fit in before we, we hear from directly from one of those uh, big OpenStack clouds, I wanted to highlight Data Centered. They're in the UK. And one of the things that's really cool about this company is they're very involved in OpenStack. So they actually hosted the most recent ops mid-cycle. If you're an OpenStack operator, you really should get to know what's going on with these ops uh, meetups. They're very, very important, uh, valuable. Operators get together and share best practices. And they hosted it in their office. And they've already got some really large users on their OpenStack public cloud, one of which is HMRC. So that is the tax collector, if you will, the tax man. I guess it's the tax queen over there. It's Her Majesty's. Revenue collector, I think it stands for. And uh, I'm not British, so I might have got that wrong. But you know, they actually, if you file your taxes in the UK, you're doing it through HMRC. That's happening on an OpenStack powered public cloud. You know, another, another example uh, is CityCloud in Sweden. So they have really specialized in the financial services market. Now, that's a class of user that's very nervous about public cloud. But with something like OpenStack that's flexible, you can design a solution for a specific vertical like that. And they're having a lot of success in Sweden. And you know, that's just a sampling of the, the hundreds of, of different uh, clouds that are, that are being built all over the world, uh, public clouds for, uh, powered by OpenStack. But to give us uh, a direct example of uh, one of the users that's really starting to aggressively roll out OpenStack, we've got the cloud lead from OVH, Maxime Hertel. 